Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains in our series on balance for life. In this video, we are going to talk about vestibular therapy interventions. If you find this video educational, please press like or subscribe below. Check out my channel for free educational videos and exercise programs. As a brief recommendation for those not familiar with the vestibular system, I highly recommend that you check out part one of the series where we talked about where the vestibular system is, how it functions, what happens with dysfunction and causes for these impairments. I am linking that video below. When it comes to vestibular rehabilitation, the plan of treatment can be categorized into two main types. Number one, addressing BPPV with positional maneuvers. And number two, addressing vestibular hypofunctioning with exercises. Treatment option number one, addressing BPPV with positional maneuvers. In part one, we talked about what BPPV is. It stands for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And what happens here as a quick review, we have these little things called ear rocks calcium carbonate crystals in the inner ear. They can become detached and they can fall into what is called one of our semicircular canals. These three canals filled with fluid that are assigned to the position of our head. If those crystals fall into one of those canals with the fluid, it will sink to the bottom. Now when we turn our head, the fluid moves, but because the crystals are there, we may stop and the fluid might keep moving, giving us this illusion of movement. Now that we understand the underlying mechanism of BPPV, we can more easily understand the treatment approach. Because this is caused by crystals becoming detached, the treatment goal is to reorient them back into place. And this can be done through a series of positions. Now, 85% of the time, those detached crystals fall into what is called the posterior canal. We have three semicircular canals. Therefore, the most common treatment intervention targets that canal, and it is called the Epley maneuver. Because of time constraints, I just went ahead and I posted a video below of this maneuver. But overall, the clinician will guide the patient into four main positions, laying down, turning their head, rolling on their side, and sitting up. They wait in each of these positions to allow the fluid to move and guide that crystal back into place. Now, if this is the true pathology, studies show a success rate of 93.4% within 1.23 maneuvers. Now, there are other maneuvers to target if the crystals fall into one of the other two canals, the anterior or the horizontal canal, but because of time constraints, we're really focusing on the Epley maneuver here. The second treatment approach for vestibular therapy is exercises to address vestibular hypofunctioning. Mm -hmm. Vestibular hypofunctioning basically means the vestibular system is not working mm -hmm. properly. The overall big picture here is to help train the brain to relearn how to respond to signals from the visual and vestibular system. This includes improving the coordination between the eyes and the head specifically through gaze stabilization exercises. Two, improving postural control, specifically our spatial orientation during head turns and positional changes. And three, reducing dizziness, including vertigo. Before we jump into those exercises, we need to know who benefits from them. Now, in video one, I talked about how vestibular dysfunction can be categorized into two main sources. One is peripheral vestibular dysfunction. This is where the impairments come from the outside peripheral vestibular apparatus. Or two, central dysfunction. This is where we have the impairments in the spinal cord or the brain. Now, research is very strong for the efficacy of vestibular therapy with peripheral dysfunction. But what about central dysfunction? Is vestibular therapy effective there? Yes. In the description below, I have included studies to support vestibular therapy being effective for individuals with head or brain trauma, such as concussion or stroke, psychogenic vertigo, such as panic or anxiety disorders, 
the elderly with dizziness. Studies show that just by simply adding gaze stabilization exercises to a balanced program can reduce risk for falls. Not only that, but the effectiveness of vestibular therapy does not change with age. BPPV, studies show better long-term outcomes when the plan of treatment is followed up by vestibular therapy exercise training. And neurological conditions, including multiple sclerosis, ataxia, including acquired and inherited, check out the description below, and Parkinson's disease, where studies below show a reduction in dizziness, fatigue, and improved ADL performance. Because vestibular therapy uses such a variety of tools, the best resource to determine the best treatment approach for you is to see a vestibular therapist. While I can review the literature here, seeing a trained vestibular therapist can determine the best approach for you. Now, when it comes to vestibular exercises, there are three main approaches, adaptation, habituation, and substitution. Before we dive into them, I'm going to give a brief overview of each one. Number one is adaptation exercises. Here, the focus is on repeatedly practicing coordination exercises of the eyes and the head with the goal that any hypofunctioning will adapt adaptation and function correctly. This can be done through gaze stabilization exercises, which we will talk about. Number two, habituation exercises. Here the focus is on identifying movements that elicit dizziness, such as head turns, positional changes, and habitually practice them, habituation, to improve the brain's ability to integrate all of that information and reduce dizziness. And number three is substitution exercises. Here, the focus is on utilizing the remaining sensory systems, the somatosensory and the visual systems, to substitute, substitution, for vestibular impairments. Alongside those three approaches, vestibular therapy will also include custom balance training, often utilizing sensory reweighting and gait training. All right, let's start with adaptation exercises. Here, the goal is to address any hypofunctioning or poor performance of the vestibular system through practicing eye-head coordination exercises. And here, the focus is on gaze stabilization exercise. The ability to stabilize the gaze, the eyes, while turning the head. The mechanism responsible for this is called the vestibulo-ocular reflex, and it is so necessary for all of our day-to-day -day activities and our balance. Now, to test an individual's VOR, the clinician may do a few informal things. First off, they may put up their pen or a finger and ask the patient to keep their eyes fixed while turning their head side to side. And they're gonna look for a few things. First off, they're gonna look for any glitches, episodes where the eyes drift off and jump back into place. That is called a saccadic intrusion and demonstrates impairments in the VOR. And two, they're gonna look at speed because perhaps an individual can keep their eyes fixated on the target, but if they can only do three cycles in a minute, that is not life. A normal vestibular ocular reflex can function at 120 beats a minute. This is 120 beats a minute. So anything slower than that demonstrates hypofunctioning in this system. Another bedside method for assessing the VOR is where the clinician asks that patient to keep their eyes fixated while the clinician quickly moves the patient's head. They're looking for those saccadic intrusions. Due to time constraints, I have a video in the link below. Overall, if there is dysfunction in the screens above, the clinician will often prescribe adaptation exercises. Here, the goal is to strengthen that VOR through recalibrating the eyes, inner ear, and brain through gaze stabilization exercises. To help you, I actually videotaped various gaze stabilization exercises in the description below. But overall, the goal is to practice stabilizing the gaze while turning the head. 
That is called VOR1. VOR2 progresses to where the target and the head move in opposite directions. And two target VOR is included in the description below. Often these exercises started sitting, progress to standing, walking, and busy backgrounds. Now, while adaptation exercises focus on improving and strengthening the VOR, in some cases, especially cerebellar pathologies, individuals need to practice being able to suppress it as well. This is called VOR cancellation. I have a video below, but overall here, the target and the head move in the same direction. So the individual keeps their eyes fixated while they turn the target and their head in the same direction. The next approach utilized in vestibular therapy is habituation exercises. So once again, here the vestibular therapist will sit down with the patient and identify specific movements that elicit dizziness, including things like head turns and positional changes. We will then practice those movements until the central nervous system compensates and is able to integrate all of that sensory mismatch and reduce dizziness and symptoms. A specific habituation exercise program is often created by utilizing the motion sensitivity test. Here the clinician has the patient go through 16 positions and identify specific movements that elicit dizziness. I do have an example of seven habituation exercises included in the description below. The third approach with vestibular rehabilitation is utilizing substitution exercises. Here the goal is to improve the brain's ability to utilize the remaining sensory systems, including the somatosensory and the visual systems to compensate for vestibular impairments. Interventions to help improve the brain's ability to effectively utilize visual input include ocular motor training, such as jumping between two targets, tracking targets as they move side to side, smooth pursuits, or in and out with convergence. I also put together two exercises in the description below to enhance eye movements. This includes two target VOR and imaginary VOR training. Another resource for vestibular therapy exercises include utilizing the Cawthorn exercise protocol. This includes progressing an individual through eye movements, head movements, head and trunk, and positional changes, combining the approaches above. I have resources and links to this protocol in the description below. A fourth approach utilized with vestibular therapy include balance exercises, where here the focus is often on sensory reweighting. With sensory reweighting, we are actually removing remaining sensory systems, the somatosensory system, the visual system, to force the brain to rely on that vestibular system. Here, the therapist might remove somatosensory input by putting patients on balance pads foam pads, air-based pads, or compliant surfaces to remove the somatosensory input coming up from the bottom of the feet. To remove visual input, the therapist may have the patient close their eyes, occlude the vision, dark environments, sunglasses, or put on goggles with Vaseline or Saran Wrap. So once again, here the goal is to remove input from the somatosensory and visual systems to force the brain to use that vestibular system. A fifth category utilized in vestibular therapy is gait training. However, here the focus is on maneuvering around obstacles and turning. And a final component of vestibular therapy includes education on compensation. Here's where we teach strategies of techniques that a person can use when experiencing dizziness until symptoms subside. Three examples include fixating on a target, avoid eye movements, head turns, and positional changes. To close your eyes and imagine a target fixating on it. Three, put more weight down, such as on a four-wheeled walker. That way you increase your base of support. These are three examples of techniques that can be utilized in the middle of motion-induced dizziness until symptoms subside. 
In conclusion, vestibular therapy utilizes a variety of approaches. Number one were those adaptation exercises, focusing on improving the coordination between the eyes and the head through gaze stabilization. Exercises are in the description below. Number two, habituation exercises. That is that repeated exposure to specific movements that elicit dizziness. Exercises are below. Number three, substitution exercises. This focuses on improving the brain's ability to more effectively utilize those remaining sensory systems. Number four is balance training, often utilizing sensory reweighting to improve the brain's ability to more effectively utilize vestibular information. Number five is gait training, often focusing more on turns and positional changes. And then compensation, learning strategies that can be used in the middle of symptoms until they subside. If you found this video educational, please press that like button below. Check out my channel and subscribe for free educational videos and exercise programs because little steps together, we can make some big gains.